Alleluia, alleluia. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law of, Mo of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. In the readings today, we're in this very, really special time, eight days before Christmas, and I think it's seven days now, and we have what's called the O Antiphon, so it's like the song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. There's a bunch of verses to that song. It beckons back to this O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And so Advent is a time when we're looking for the coming of Jesus, and we celebrate that great big coming of Jesus at Christmas. And we all look forward to Christmas. You know, one little girl once asked me, if Christmas is Jesus' birthday, then why do we get presents? And I thought that was a good question. But what Jesus said, in a way, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me. So in other words, when we receive a gift, it's like Jesus is getting a present. And when we give a gift, it's like Jesus giving the gift, too, because we're called to be part of his body. And so that's what I said. And she said, oh, and then she said, well, if Jesus is about your size, how do we all fit into his body? Isn't that a great little question? And, and this, the answer is really quite simple for us. When we go to communion, that communion is really Jesus, and it becomes part of who we are. And so if we're in this state of grace and we receive the Blessed Sacrament, we receive the host then indeed we become what we consume. We become part of bod the body of Christ. The body of Christ becomes part of us. And that's what's really cool about Jesus and how much he loves us. He came into this world to show the depth of his love for us. And if we accept Jesus, it's simple. Then we start to live like Jesus. We don't lie, we don't cheat, we don't steal. And the, and the most important thing is we love. We love even those who lie, cheat, and steal. And why would we do that? Hopefully so that they could be converted to Christ. There are whole nations in the world that hate religion. They think religion is wrong. In fact, they fight against it and oftentimes kill people who believe. And that raises up the Christian martyrs. But those Christian martyrs, and that word martyr just means to be a witness, it's our opportunity to love even in the face of hatred. Can you imagine loving someone that just cheated at a game? That's hard. You get angry. And the anger is righteous anger. But you love them. They may win the game, but they don't really win anything in God's eyes. In fact, great damage can often be done when cheaters get to be in control. So we need to be people who love. We need to be people who are peacemakers. We need to be people who try and help the world understand how important it is to be a Christian. Our prayer needs to be that one day we need, we need to hope that 
the cheaters will admit that they're cheaters, and then their heart might be drawn back to Christ because God will forgive them. See, it's all about truth, goodness, and beauty. It's that simple. And the more we try and imitate those things, the more we try and live that way, it just makes us happier. When you see people who cheat and steal and lie and do all these things, they're usually not very happy people. They're usually mean. So we need to try and confront that with love, kindness, truth, and beauty. And guys, what will happen if we pursue perfection? We will achieve excellence. And why in the world do we want to achieve excellence? To glorify God. That's right. God bless you guys. And Christmas is coming. And uh, let us just pray that God will help us be ready for him at his coming. And that we might bring Jesus to others the way we treat each other. And then also that we wait for that time when Jesus comes back to judge the living and the dead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray for the church, that she may be a light to the nations and a guide to all people. We pray for the Lord. All nations throughout the world, that they may know and serve the common good and not be motivated by greed and self-interest. We pray for the Lord. We pray for Martha Polarski and the attention of this man. We pray for the Lord. Okay, and then also we pray, we pray for, um, for an end of this corona pandemic, for, for that God bring us healing and strength, and that we use all the gifts that he's given us to help bring it to an end. We pray to the Lord. For more vocations to the priesthood, religious life, faith-filled marriages, and the dedicated single life, we pray to the Lord. That all corruption in our world be uncovered and those responsible for it lose their power and be replaced by leaders who respect life, religious liberty, and all that's in accord with natural law, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.